Hello everyone, Lambda here. In this video we will see, circuit simulation using, QUCS. To know more about QUCS, you can visit its Wikipedia page. Or, visit its website. QUCS is a free software. You can download it, from its website, or, from the software store of your operating system. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In this video, we will simulate, half-wave rectifier. To simulate, open the QUCS SPICE software. Click on New, to create a new project. And, enter the name of your project. A blank untitled file will be created. You can create more files, by clicking on new file icon. This blank space with dots, is our working area. To add components to the blank space, and create the circuit. Go to the components tab. Here components are grouped into few categories, such as, lumped components, sources, simulations, etc. Now, let's create our circuit. First click on, AC voltage source, inside the sources group. And click on the blank space, where you want to place it. Dots are there to help you in component placement. Click escape when you are done. To add, resistor, for our load, go to, lumped components, select resistor, and place it. Similarly, add one diode from nonlinear components, and, the ground from lumped components. To rotate any component, you can right-click on the component and select rotate or you can simply use control plus r on your keyboard when you have imported and placed all the components to connect them with wire click on the wire button move the cursor and click on the component ends one by one You can also click on blank space, while wiring, for proper routing of the wire. When all the wiring is done, click escape. In half-wave rectifier, we are converting, the AC voltage, into DC voltage. But the half-wave rectifier, converts the voltage only for half the cycle. In order to see the graph of, input and output voltages, we will use voltage measurement probes. We will use two separate probes, for input voltage and output voltage. The probe has two inputs, positive and negative. Connect the positive side to the point where the voltage is to be measured. And connect the negative side to the ground. As you can observe, when two wires are connected, there forms a dot. Next, for simulation. Go to the simulation components, and place the transient simulation block, to anywhere in the blank space. Our circuit building is complete. Next, we will change the component parameters, and values, as per our requirements. To change the parameters, just double click on the component. The property window will open. Let's select the input voltage as, 15 volts. And frequency as 50 hertz.
in the transient simulation block, change the stop time to 40 milliseconds, so that we can see two cycles of input and output voltages. Save the file with your desired name. The format of file should be schematic. Next, to simulate, click on Simulate inside the Simulate menu. A new file with extension .dpl will be created, and its file name will be same as that of the schematic. In order to plot the graphs, place Cartesian plot in the DPL file. A diagram property window will open. On the left side we have some data. Double click on the data which we want to plot. Here PR1 and PR2 stands for, Probe 1 and Probe 2 data, which are input and output voltages. Here we can also change the graph's color, style, and, thickness. Next, click on Apply, and then, OK. And voila, we have the desired graphs. You can also resize the graph box. As you can see, here the graph lines are, kind of straight, and not curved, as they should be. That is because of the step size of simulation, which indicates sampling interval. In order to get smooth, curved graphs, change the step size to a smaller value. And simulate. And, we have perfect looking curves. Err, our input voltage is set to 1 volt and not 15. Let's change that. Yes, that's another way of changing just the value. You can also simulate, by clicking on the gear icon. And, so we have our desired graphs. Here, blue curve shows PR1 data, that is input voltage. And red curve shows PR2 data or, the output voltage, which is flowing only for the positive cycle. Here, we can see that, the output voltage peak value, is slightly less than, the input voltage peak value. That is because of the 0.7 volts drop at the diode. So, this is our half-wave rectifier circuit. And, this is the desired input output voltage graphs that's it for today's video and i will see you in the next one